Hi there everyone, this is Bob Martin with rcsub.com and the Nautilus Dry Docks and this is the next chapter uh, of the build blog for this OTW 132nd scale Type 7 U-boat model uh, for RC operation. Uh, before we get started I'll let you know where we're at right now in case you missed the previous chapters. Um, the model, I, I would say the hull is, is probably about 90% uh, complete, uh, at least from the exterior. Um, you probably can't see it, but it's actually been split uh, at this point and this point, so it's actually in three sections, and uh, that was done for a couple of reasons. Uh, one was obviously for transport. The model is 83 inches long overall, which makes it somewhat awkward to transport. But the other reason is that uh, we need to install the electronics compartment, uh, which is a cylinder uh, about five inches in diameter and uh, two and a half feet long, and uh, to get it in from the top was uh, a little problematic and so by cutting it allows us to slip it in from the back. So what I'm going to do right now, uh, I'm just going to pop this open so you can see what the work that I've done inside and uh, we can move on from there. Okay, as I mentioned in my previous um, chapters, what I did for the decking is I created some magnetic hold down catches and that saves the need for having to undo screws all the time to get at the linkages and, and check things out underneath. So um, what I'm going to do, I'm just going to I'm going to pop this open so that you can see what that looks like. And these are in sections, this is brass uh, grating that comes with the kit. This is the, the center section. Conning tower is attached to it uh, with three stainless steel bolts uh, in the bottom, as is the uh, front cannon there. This is the main wire lead, the power lead for the LED lights for the conning tower. You can see that the removal is actually really easy, uh, but the magnets, the little button magnets, are, uh, are quite powerful and I'm not really worried at all about them coming loose uh, during the operation of the boat. Okay, I'll take a look on the uh, inside of the boat. Now this is the bow. Uh, you can see the forward bulkhead here. Uh, we've got an opening there for the linkage, the forward linkage for the forward torpedo tubes. Two bulkheads. Uh, the forward one and the aft one. Of course, the forward one is attached to the bow, back one is attached to the centerpiece, and the seam runs right down the side there. And part of the reason this looks so so uh, kind of perfect right now is um, it it has been uh, sanded flush and then and then primed over. So there's just a little bit of primer filling that gap. But I'm I'm still pretty confident, and I haven't done it yet. <laughs> Once I I separate it, that's just really just going to be a hairline seam. Um, taking a look on the inside here we have support bracket and that keeps the proper width for the uh, upper part of the hull so that the deck lines up nicely. We got a pair of aluminum tubes and actually what those are for uh, is for sliding in the cylinder from the back section there. Uh, it slide it forward along those rails and then if you look in the front here, we've got uh, another little bulkhead with a pair of holes in it and those holes line up to the nuts on the cylinder and that's what keeps it locked in uh, in the front. So that is really where we are at in terms of the hull itself. Uh, what I am going to be working on for this chapter of the build uh, I'm going to continue my work with the torpedoes. I'll finally get some video for you guys uh, of the operation of those. Uh, hopefully they'll be working in the pool, get some underwater footage for you guys so you can see how they work. Uh, and the other thing that I'm going to do is fabricate new torpedo tube uh, doors, the covers here, which had to get cut out of the original kit because these were molded in so I've got to fabricate uh, new ones there and replicate the uh, really incredible rivet detail that uh, I hope you can see here right now. Oh, 
All right, let's take a look at the uh, torpedo tube doors. Uh, we'll knock that thing out because it uh, is fairly straightforward. This is one that I have already uh, completed, and the way that I fabricated this, I've got some brass sheeting. You can see the uh, new one that I have cut out here. Very thin gauge, like a sheet of, of paper, really. Uh, I've marked out the rivet lines on there with pencil. Uh, on the back of the um, brass sheeting, I've adhered some thick styrene plastic, just to give it some rigidity, uh, a little bit of strength, and uh, some width to work with. So, and you take a look there and see the way that the light reflects off of it. it uh, the, the method that I've used to create the rivets is really straightforward. Uh, it's basically embossed and uh, the high-tech tools that you'll need to replicate this uh, consist of a screw and a hammer. So uh, really straightforward like I said and, and hopefully you guys will be able to see this as I do it. And I'll, uh, I'll actually I'm going to move this to the other side because I'm left-handed. Alright, so the big thing about this is you just need to make sure that you do not uh, hit too hard because it'll pierce uh, right through the, uh, the brass. So you're just going to make a little tap, move it, and as you can see this goes really fast. And I'm, I'm just, just tapping it. So there you can see both sides. So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to continue that on for the entire rest of the uh, panel, uh, adhere it to the plastic, and I'm going to call that good. All right, um, this took me, I'm going to say about three or four minutes uh, to do all of these, and there's probably about I'd say 250 rivets on this uh, piece of brass. So you can see it's a very quick uh, and really effective way of doing this. So what I need to do now, I need to adhere this to the back of the uh, torpedo tube door there right now. So uh, pardon the noise, what I'm going to do, I'm going to rough up the back with my uh, Dremel tool. And what that does is it's going to give uh, something for the uh, glue to adhere to. Uh, brass obviously uh, is a fairly smooth surface and uh, by roughing it up it's going to make it so that it adheres uh, much stronger to this piece of plastic. Um, that's basically it. That is our uh, fabrication uh, of the doors. Next step is going to be to install them. All right, let's take a look at the uh, the forward dive plane assembly. Now, originally when I took a look at this, <clears throat> everything looked to be all right. Uh, everything was moving. Uh, when I took a closer look at it, though, when I was getting prepped to do the linkages, I discovered that there was a lot of binding uh, in these forward dive planes. And what I've actually had to do is, is literally cut them out. Uh, reason being is uh, the previous owner did actually do a good job in designing this. He has a, you know, a, uh, a shaft with some collars on here that uh, you know theoretically you can loosen to remove the dive planes but I don't know if you can see that but they're extremely corroded. Now this um, model I'm assuming has been stored for uh, a little while and when I finally got things out um, which was challenging obviously in that uh, close spot now you can see the brass bushings that come with the, uh, the kit but there was epoxy all over everything in there and there was a lot of binding. Um, and the challenge is I'm going to be running the forward and rear dive planes off of a single servo and uh, as such it needs to do a lot of work. Uh, I don't want things to be, uh, be gummed up to the point where performance suffers. So I'm going to rework uh, the entire forward dive plane uh, linkage there and all of the bushings so that everything is nice and smooth. The one thing I will say is that uh, he assembled this in such a manner that these forward brackets are removable. Uh, they were held on by nuts uh, and that's the same thing here in the, the support bracket. Uh, has a bolt that I can remove. So that's what I'm working on right now. Uh, since we're here, I can take a quick look at the um, forward torpedo tube door. That's been primed. Uh, it's been adhered in place. Like I said, that's going to stay 
exactly where it's at. It's going to remain in the open position during operation. The other thing I was worked on, uh, I made the decision to do was to install one of these bad boys. Uh, now this is a bow thruster. Uh, it's a Gropner unit. Uh, I've used these before in my big Typhoon, if you remember that video. Uh, but if you can see inside, which would be challenging, I know, there's a paddle and it basically scoops the water from one side to the next. It actually puts out pretty well. So what I've actually done, cracked open my cylinder again, I've added a separate speed controller which is going to give me fully proportional control over the uh, the speed of the bow thruster and I hooked it up on channel 4 of the radio which basically means you've got your throttle and rudder uh, and then you've got your bow plant or your, sorry your bow thruster uh, right here so it should be fairly intuitive to use um, you know when you stop and you and you kick in the uh, the thruster it'll spin you left and right so uh, worked out really well there and how this works uh, on the front as you may have seen there before here are the openings for the uh, the thruster and you can see on the inside where those are so that bow thruster is just going to sit right in there um, it's going to spin it around and the reason that I oriented the uh, thrust ports back rather than forward so that is um, I will have access for repairs uh, if and when they become necessary so if I would have mounted this forward I wouldn't have been able to have gotten to these bolts uh, or cracked open the inside if there's binding or anything gets sucked inside so that's the reason I did that even though I sacrificed about an inch and a half of leverage uh, obviously the further forward you mount it the the more mechanical advantage that thruster will have to swivel the model around but it's only about uh, you know 11 inches 12 inches from the bow uh, and should serve to spin this thing around sufficiently to just give it a little bit more maneuverability everyone we have just had our first quasi successful testing of the torpedo system um, we have a mixed bag of results we have one fairly reliable weapon uh, we have one that leaks to the point that it's uh, non-usable and will need to be scrapped we have one that for some reason is too heavy to float uh, and then we have another one that uh, works as well so two out of four weapons uh, seem to be working. Um, in terms of performance, it's completely random. The, uh, the weapons will skew about, and that's in line with my findings from the other torpedo projects that I've worked on before. I'm still not completely sure about this methodology for torpedoes. Uh, I think it will work. Um, but I'd be more concerned about you know a slight leak in the gas system, slowly uh, uncharging the weapon over time until a point where someone goes to fire it and there's no gas left. So we're going to keep working at this, we're going to tweak it, but as you've seen um, the weapons are firing, uh, they're shooting, some of them are, are more missile-like than torpedo-like, but um, still lots of fun to watch, so we'll see what happens. 
Okay, I'm about ready to sign off for this uh, blog. Thanks for joining me. Um, just a quick update on where we're at before we jump into the next chapter. Uh, I got some linkages done. Uh, you can see that the drive shafts uh, are both in place, got some universal joints in there. Uh, I've also installed um, linkages for the dive planes and for the rudder. Um, I don't know if you can see this, there's my dive plane operation. And then what I did is uh, I ran through the, the bottom of the hull and through the aluminum tubes that the cylinder rests on. Um, this magnetic catch and this is the uh, the dive plane linkages so that shoots all the way to the front of the boat so if we take a look back here you can see that both the front and rear dive planes are actuating at the same time they're working uh, opposite one another so the front planes can pull the bow down as the rear planes push the aft end up. Here's the uh, the forward section right there and then where the uh, linkage exits. And I had to put this um, armature in here because the um, planes have to work opposite each other. Uh, I had to change the direction so I had to add a little bit of, uh, of extra linkage in there to make that all happen. So that's what I've been working on uh, on this boat. Um, really I'm actually quite satisfied. Um, all I need to do now is um, get the cylinder finished up, get it buttoned up properly. Uh, I got two new batteries in there, um, do the last of the connections and then uh, figure out those torpedoes. Uh, as you saw they're, they're, they're not reliable. They, they, they work and they're pretty cool. Um, but I'm going to get that uh, so that they're, they're really quite bulletproof. Um, but we're getting close. I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to getting some paint on this thing. It's an absolutely gorgeous boat. Thanks for joining me. Uh, we will see you guys next time.